Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is AP Physics C, that's Calculus Mechanics. And we're going through the 2019 AP Physics C exam. And this is problem number two. So we're going to get to it, and I'll give you the scoring guidelines. And you can put your your results in MrAiden.com. So you can see here, I have a ballistics pendulum. This pendulum uh, has a this block of 1, has a mass of 3M. It is exactly, you can see, a height of L, um, not at some angle, it's a height of exactly L above this this block. It is going to swing, which means we're going to have a gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy. It's going to swing. It's going to hit block 2. Block 2 has a mass of M. Block 2 will go off the table. Block 2, the table is 2L in terms of its height. And it's going to go a distance, a horizontal distance of 4L. It's going to land over here. The block 1 will continue as a pendulum after the collision. So you can see these types of problems. There is a gravitational pot to potential problem. There's a collision, which means we have a momentum problem. We have a kinematics problem as something comes flying off the table as well. So let's see what they ask us. I already kind of know what's what's going to go on on this, and this is a variable problem. And we want to know the speed of the block at the bottom just before the swing makes contact. So I have a gravitational potential energy equals kinetic energy, a conservation of energy. We have our mass, which is 3m times g, which is gravity, times the height. What was the height? It was L. And that equals 1 half times 3m, that's the mass, times the velocity squared, which is what I'm trying to find. You can see the masses end up canceling out. Um, the masses end up canceling out here, the m's. And we have, uh, we're multiplying this over this side. So you can see how the, the ending result is velocity equals the square root of the 3 cancels out, we have 2GL, and that is worth 1 point. 1 point for velocity equals the square root of 2GH, or 2GL in this case. Okay, so that was A. Now B is asking, right at the end, we know what the velocity is. The velocity equals the square root of 2GL. We don't want to forget that, because that might be something that we use later on. Remember, that was found in A. And down here, they want to know what's the force diagram. Now keep in mind, when you have something that is swinging like this, there is obviously the force of gravity, which I'm going to go down, or the weight. Okay, but there is also a tension which is much, 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 much greater going up. And this tension is coming from our centripetal force, our, is our net force, our tension must be greater than the force of gravity. And this is obviously where, at the bottom, is where a, you know, the string could break if it could. Okay, you get one point for the force of tension, it's got to be larger and one point for the force of gravity, which has got to be smaller. Remember, the magnitudes are coming into play, so that's worth two points for B. Let's come in the C. Remember, we still know that velocity equals the square root of 2GL. That was from A. We don't forget what's happening is from B. The B was the tension is much greater than the force of gravity here, and they want an expression for the force of tension, which means I have the net force is equal to mass times acceleration, which is equal to the forces going on here. And we have tension minus the force of gravity, because tension is going towards the center. Which means, what is the acceleration of this? It is mv squared over r, because it's a centripetal force, is the net force. We have force of tension right here, minus the mass times gravity. Let's plug in what, what I know. I know the mass is 3m. I know the velocity squared is the square root of 2gl squared, which just ends up becoming 2gl, over the radius r, which is length. Okay, And that's equal to the force of tension minus 3 times m times gravity there. And so you can see what happens here. A few things cancel out. We have that we have the lanes canceling out here, and we have um, left, as we do our algebra, is the force of tension is equal to 6mg plus 3mg, which equals 9mg. 
you get uh, two points for this problem. Uh, one point for setting up your equation right here and one point for cleaning it up and making it 9mg at the end. So two points for C. Now you can see as we come into D, D is asking some different things. Okay, They finally give me the length is 75 centimeters or 0.75 meters. Remember everything's got to be in SI units so we're going to be in meters. We want to know the time between the block leaving the table and it hitting the floor and so that is a purely kinematics problem. Remember that is equal to my height is equal to one half gt squared or the time is equal to square root 2g 2h over g. Those are equations that you want to know. What's the height of the table? The height of the table is 2 times L. So it's square root 2 times 2 times L over G. I plug in all my numbers and I end up getting 0.55 seconds. 0.55 seconds for letter D. Uh, one point for setting up my kinematics. One point for my answer of 0.55 seconds. Now look, we're going to go to E. E says calculate the speed of block 2 as it leaves the table. Well, I know the distance is going to be 4L. So the velocity in the x direction of that speed of block 2 is the displacement in the x direction over the time in that x direction. The displacement in the x direction is 4 times L. The time is 0.55 seconds. I can plug in my L is 0.75 and I end up getting 5.4 meters per second. Again, it's a simple kinematics problem. We get 1.4 for my kinematics equation, 1.4 for my answer right there, 2 points for E. Now we come to F. F says, what's the speed of block 1 just after it collides? When, when it says collides, you're thinking momentum. The momentum initially is always equal to the momentum finally. Momentum is always conserved, which means you know th that 3m block is going the square root of 2gl that was found from, from part A. And that is equal to the 3m block going some final velocity plus the block of block 2 we know what velocity he's going, 5.4 meters per second. We got that from E right there. And you can see right here is when I multiply everything out here, I get 11.5 m is equal to 3 m v final plus 5.4 m. What's in every single thing is m, so we can cancel all of our m's out. And we're just doing a little bit of final algebra to solve for v final. V final ends up becoming 2.03 meters per second. Okay, so let's take a look at the points on this one. There's actually three points on this one. One point for setting up your conservation of, of momentum, recognize the conservation of momentum. One point for substituting, and one point for solving. So one point for conservation of momentum, one point for substituting, one point for solving. And last but not least is letter G. Okay, letter G says calculate the angle max, the angle max. And so this is going to be a gravitational potential to a kinetic type problem. So our it's it's of block two, remember we're talking about block oh, sorry, block we're talking about block one, is the its kinetic energy equals its total gravitational potential energy. What do I know about its kinetic energy? It's three M times G times sorry, sorry. Uh, one half, one half times its mass, which is 3m, times its velocity squared. Okay, we found that was 2.03 meters per second. We found that from um, from part f. So that this is going to be from part f and it is going to go a gravitational potential energy 3m times g times the maximum height okay now an equation that i had you guys know before is whenever we're doing a pendulum problem a pendulum problem and a gravitational potential energy for a pendulum problem 
h equals l minus l cosine theta. h equals l times l cosine theta. Because if you can see, my pendulum's right here, that's length l. It's going to go up to some angle theta, okay? And you can see how here, this is the h, which means this guy right here is, right here and here, is going to be the L cosine of theta, the L cosine theta. So L minus L cosine theta is that height that it's going to go up. So we can replace that right here. We can replace that right here with L minus L cosine of theta. That theta is what I'm trying to find. Uh, the 3M cancels out in this problem. The 3m cancels out in this problem. You're going to plug in 2.03 for the velocity squared. You're going to plug in 9.8 for gravity. You're going to plug in 0.75 for the L. You're going to solve for that cosine of theta. And the theta ends up becoming 43.5 degrees. This is worth three points. One point for recognizing your conservation of energy. One point for this h equals l minus l cosine theta and then one point for the final angle right there and so that is your 2019 problem number two a was worth one point for finding the velocity uh, b was worth two points for your free body diagram c was worth two points one for sending up your equation for centripetal force net force one point for 9 mg you can see d was worth two points one point for the kinematic equation, one point for your answer. E was worth two points, one for your kinematics equation, one point for the answer. F was worth three points, one for conservation of momentum, one for substituting, one for solving. G was worth three points, one for conservation of energy, one point for the height equals L minus L cosine theta, one point for finding the theta. And that is your AP Physics Calculus Mechanics 2019 exam problem number two. Thanks. Hope this helped. Have a great day.